Ah, my old steam engine. One of the first things I actually made on the channel. A little jank, a little, little weird, but he did his job. And you know what? I think it was still pretty good. It was fully tileable in any direction, self-powering. However, there was one main problem. And that was the unbelievable amount of comments I received saying, Each, how do I start this? And you know, it was such a design overflow. Overflow? That's not a word. Overlook. <laughs> it was such a design flaw that I totally ignored. And so I have gone ahead and after a community poll, I have decided to revisit this project and make a Steam Engine version 2 that is self-powering, which you won't need to worry about actually powering it. And that is this design right here. And now your immediate thoughts are going to be, this is much bigger, much bulkier than the old design. However, it is completely and utterly self-sufficient per module, as the five large water wheels on the far side are actually the perfect amount of stress to run all the requirements like the pumps and the arm needed to distribute the items around this thing. And of course, this is now a level 9 boiler instead of a level 4, like the first boiler, which means that even just one of these modules is going to be pumping out just under 150,000 stress units, which is no joke. That is a good size. And it's pretty easy to tile this thing uh, as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump straight into the tutorial. I'm going to show you the material list right here. So pause here, gather everything up. Obviously, if you want to make two, three, four of these, just double, triple your resources, and then we can get started. Okay, so to start things off, we're going to start at the back end here with the water wheels and work our way backwards. So we're going to start off with a 4 by 19 area. Now that is measuring the stone here. The smooth stone is just an outline. So you want a 4 by 19 area. For that. And to start, we're going to come on this block here with a rotational speed controller with a cog on it. And we're going to set this to 256 speed with a shaft and a gearbox coming out of it like this. And then we're going to take our five large water wheels, one, two, three, four, five, just off the back there. And before we put the water in on the top, I'm actually going to build up this little cauldron dripstone area as this will also contain the water partly. So for that, we're going to take some pipes and these are going to just be in an array of three by seven, like this. And then, of course, we have a layer of cauldrons above. We've all seen this before, however, just like this with cauldrons above. And then dripstone or any solid block above these. And then the pointed dripstone below. Uh, I like to use the actual dripstone blocks for this. As I think it just kind of looks nice with the actual pointed dripstone itself. But any solid block will work in place of these. If you don't have access to these. So what you have should be looking something like this. We have five large water wheels with this on the end. And then a 3 by 7 area of cauldrons with dripstone and pointed dripstone above them. So now we're going to add in the water and lava for both of these things. And to do that, we're just going to place in some temporary blocks all around the outside here, like this. And then we're going to come along these and place in some framed glass trapdoors. Now on this back end here, it's important to note that we only do two frame glass trapdoors and a temporary block in this space, as there is going to be a pipe here eventually, but we don't want the lava to spill out while we're working on this. So for now, just throw a temporary block there. And of course, flip all of those trapdoors down, and you should have something like this. Now for the water buckets for the wheel, it doesn't particularly matter which direction it comes from. However, the easiest way to place these is actually with some temporary blocks, because if you see, we try and shift place the water wheels like this, it's going to place into the trap door with the glass, and we don't want that. So to make it easier on ourselves, we're just going to do a th another line of temporary blocks through the middle, and then we're just going to place in our water sources against the side of that block, break those out, and you can see that that water is now fully contained, and the water wheels are spinning. The lava is just the same, we're going to remove all the temporary blocks except for this one here, and just put all those 21 lava buckets right over on the edge making sure that we have sources above all of them and there's no flowing lava i am actually unsure as to whether flowing lava will work with a dripstone cauldron i know it produces the uh, effects like this but i don't know if it will actually work and fill the cauldron unless it is a source block directly above that's why i always use full sources even though it's a little more expensive go to the nether or you know a lava pool underground and you should find a good amount enough amount of lava to do something like this so yeah, now once you've done that, we've got our water in, we've got our lava in, and we're ready to work on the engine part. 
So once we're here, we're ready to work on the item distribution system for the blaze burners with the mechanical arm. So of course, for that, we're actually going to need to take our blaze burners and we're going to come one, two blocks apart from this and then do a three by three square level with cauldrons, making sure that we leave this one block wide space here on the far side as we're going to run some shafts through here. So in order to deposit the lava into these blaze burners, we need to have a system that will cycle full and empty buckets around with a mechanical arm. So to do that, we're going to come into this little two by three gap, place a depot here with a smart shoot above. And this is going to have a filter for lava buckets with another depot above that and then a spout above against this block here. And then from the bottom here, we're going to take one pipe, a mechanical pump and two more pipes. And we're going to break and replace our temporary block with the pipe there. And you can see that is going to hold back this lava source here. Now, it's important to note this mechanical pump needs to be pointing upwards. So what we need to do is we need to flip this round um, like this. If yours is already facing the right direction, of course, you don't need to do this. But this arrow needs to be pointing up. So once we've got this little system in, you can see what that's going to do is the buckets are going to go onto here. They're going to get spouted with lava and come down onto this depot. However, we aren't quite done just yet as we need to place a hopper against this with another smart shoot with a bucket for empty buckets. And that is so the mechanical arm knows where to put each part. So the arm will drop them off here and then they will grab them from this depot down the bottom. So in order to get the rotational power over there, what we're going to do is we're going to take this gearbox we placed down in the beginning and we're going to run a nice long shaft all the way down to the end of the cauldrons where we're going to place a vertical gearbox. Then from here, we're going to take three cogs just over the top and that's going to reach the pump there with a fourth one going down below to there. So what's going to happen is we're going to place the mechanical arm in this gap here and we're going to set that up by doing deposit to all of these blaze burners. We're going to take from this bottom depot and we're going to deposit to the empty bucket chute up here. We're just going to place him in right there. And you'll get an achievement if you haven't done that before. What's that for? Program a mechanical arm with 10 or more output locations. Hmm. Free achievement. Nice. So this is pretty much all the system done for getting the blaze burners in. So there is only one more thing to do, and that is to hook up the pump that will put the water into the tank. So for that, we're just going to take four shafts over the top here. We're going to have a second vertical gearbox with two cogs coming out the side, just like this. And before we actually hook up that pump, we're going to place in the tank, which is going to be three by three by two, three, four, five. So you should have a three by three by five tank like this. So for the water pump itself, we're just going to take four more frame glass trap doors and this out a bit. Now, I guess these do kind of come out that little area. However, they can just be any block or whatever. These are just here to keep the water retained. I'm going to put those in a mechanical pump onto there with a pipe above it going into here. Now you can see again, we've got the same issue where the pump is facing the wrong direction. So we're just going to smack that with a wrench and that's going to start going in. Now, because we don't have any steam engines on this yet, you can see this tank is going to start filling up with water, but this is a pretty good method to see whether it's working or not. Then, of course, finally, we have the last touch, and that is the steam engines, of which we're going to do nine of, just on top of the farm here, with shafts above all of these. And then on one side of it, we're going to add an extra slot and a belt just going across. And what this is going to do is that it's just going to collect all of the power coming out of here into one system, as otherwise we would have three spokes with 50 KSU. Now, if you wanted to split those up and send them to different places, you could, of course. However, I prefer to just join them all into one network. And you may have gathered a stressometer during this time. I just put one here just so you can test to see the power output of this thing. Uh, but you don't need that, really. It's just uh, there for all informational reasons. And that is the build pretty much done. However, there is one last issue you may have noticed, and that is... Blaze burners aren't heated, and that is because there's no buckets for them to actually use. So I imagine when you collected all the lava required for this thing, you probably made a handful of buckets. So you can just go ahead and toss those in on the top there. And you can see that's going to start powering up. Uh, bear in mind, it might take a little bit for this thing to reach full power, as the dripstone isn't the fastest thing in the world. However, what I tend to like to do, if I just grab some lava buckets is whenever I start one of these engines, I just throw a handful of lava into the cauldrons here um, just to kickstart the system and get it going. Uh, of course, you don't have to do this. If you're patient enough, it will just 
slowly ramp up to maximum power, but this is a good way of just giving it a bit of a jump start. And yeah, that is one module of the Steam Engine done, and it's relatively cheap, it's pretty simple to build, it's a little big, but it is completely self-sustaining, which means that because it's powered by these water wheels, this should hopefully never turn off unless it's in unloaded chunks and it runs out of lava or something, but that's just Minecraft problems. That's not really a machine problem. Suppose if you have a mod like FTB Chunks, whatever that one is, which allows you to claim and force load chunks, you could load this thing in at all times so it never runs out. But of course, that's just a problem that you would need to diagnose and solve on your own if it came up. However, there is one last thing we want to do here, and that is I want to show you how to tile these over multiple engines in case you want to make more, more than one. So now that we've got three of these placed in together, I have actually replaced the middle trapdoors here with glass just so it's a bit easier to understand. And you can see if we come down the front, all these cogs that we placed actually come together in one line. So it kind of collects the whole system into one. And around the back here, what we need to do is all we need to do is take some gearboxes. We're going to place these on the backs of the water wheels with one in between like this. So alternating a gearbox every block. Fill these spaces with some shafts and you can see they now all connect up together. And then on the far side here where this big shaft comes out, we're going to place one more of these with a cog and a rotational speed controller. And we're just going to set that to max. And what's going to happen is because all of these cogs are linked through the middle, uh, that one shaft on this side is going to power all the way through and power everything in the network. And with that, that's how you can tile these relatively easily with pretty much no real work other than a couple extra gearboxes on the back. And for the eagle-eyed among you, you may recognize this design already from my live streams here on the channel, as I have already actually gone ahead and built some of these steam engines over on Create the Server, a project that I've been streaming. And I actually decorated those to look like the coal generators from Satisfactory, as my whole kind of little base that I'm working on is Satisfactory themed. Uh, so these things have real potential to be decorated in a really awesome manner. And it is worth noting that over on Create the Server, we do have a handful of mods, so that is not something that you could build in a vanilla block palette. However, I'm sure you could work around that and find blocks to use instead. Uh, however, that was in a modded build scene, so just keep that in mind if you wanted to replicate that in your own. But yeah, that's going to do it for today. So thank you all very much for watching. I know it's taken me a while to get some more tutorials out. I've just had a lot going on IRL and uh, oof, it's been a whole thing. So thank you all for watching. It's been Skeej. Make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any thoughts on this. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.